Yeah, Wayne's World. Yes. Yes. Wayne's World. Sometimes I make a Zoolander joke and only two people get it or laugh. Maybe it's that they get it. It's not funny, but either way. We talked about Lewis Hatzes and bases. I want to go over that in a second, but let's do the quiz over here. Else, These people would be calling me in high school. Me. What concentration of sodium hydroxide would yield a solution with a pH of twelve point eight zero? What type of square did you find in your notes? I mean, maybe you didn't use that, but this is one of those like, okay, you're already in the square of knowledge or whatever you want to call it, and you go around it in the pattern that you need. You have pH and you want concentration. I would go to pH from pOH, and I would go to pOH from concentration of hydroxide. And if you want to be systematic about it, you would get there from NaOH. And you might want to be systematic about it. Yes? Okay, thanks. Cool. Thank you. Okay, I have... I guess you'd go the other way, wouldn't you? Arrows are in the wrong way. That's okay. pH equals negative... Well, pH plus pOH equals 14, so 12.80 plus POH equals 14, so POH equals 1.20. From there, I say POH is the negative log of OH minus. O plus negative log OH minus. OH minus, skip a little bit here, equals 10 to the negative Full conversion, you want to get it to NaOH. And when it is a molecule that has only one OH in it, this is works out to a conversion of one over one, so you don't need to do any maths. But strong base. Questions, thoughts on strong base? Expected pH of 0.50 molar ammonia, which has a pKb of 4.70. Someone pointed out this is pretty much exactly what we did before. I don't know. I just sit in my office and make these things up, right? Like scarfing my, what I have, chili on top of some frozen green beans from Trader Joe's because that's like the cheapest lunch you can get that we'll keep in the freezer here. Well, there's that. I have a friend in grad school who did the math on like calories per dollar for at the supermarket that was close to him, and he ended up with the frozen like Tombstone pizzas, but not the Tombstone brand, the store brand. It was a lot. It was like a maybe 1,300 calories for a dollar fifty or something. So and now, my my response to him was, yeah, but you ought not eat only that, you know, 
because there's no vegetables on it, there's no fiber in it, there's no heat, but, you know, discussion for a different day, I guess. Okay, what kind of base, well, is this a base or an acid? Gave it away. It's a base. Weak or strong? Weak. Weak, because you got a PKB. Very good. If it's in the notes, you want me to do it? We can do it. All right. KB, it's a negative log of KB. KB is 1.7, negative, 10 of the 1.99, or I guess 2.0 as written. And then you might write a balanced equation. I inquired about the noise, by the way, they're on it, but weren't able to solve it on this time frame. The high pitch noise. Make a nice table. X is small. The base is weak. <clears throat> that is the concentration of OH minus. So POH is the negative log of that. POH, oops, excuse me, pH you get from the pH plus POH is 14, and we will arrive at 11.5. Okay, questions, thoughts on weak base? Process is going to be the same. Like I said, ammonia is really common. I might come up with a different weak base, so it might have a different PKB, or a P I might give you the PKA, and then you have to convert it to the PKB using the rule of 14. But most of what you need is in the squares of knowledge, and then you get a nice table or whatever problem-solving strategies you like to get between them. Okay. This is all Bronsted acid material, protons being transferred from acid to base. Questions or thoughts? Rock and roll. Lewis acids. What was the oxygen? The Lewis acid or the Lewis base? Base, why? has a lone pair, or two lone pairs, and in this case it is a lone pair donor. Iron is the recipient of those lone pairs, so it is a Lewis acid. As drawn, 
What atom is acting as the Lewis acid? Iron. Iron. Yeah, you just did this if you're in 111L. And as drawn, what atom is acting as the Lewis base? The thiocyanate is the molecule. Sulfur, as drawn, is the Lewis base because that's the part of it that's binding. But yes, thiocyanate is the Lewis base because it has a lone pair. And it is very happy to donate it to a model. Or as you found from your equilibrium constant, it is modestly happy. It's reasonably happy to donate its lone pair to iron. This is about the extent of what we do with acid base. Just one more nuance that we'll practice. And actually, let's see that right now. Why right, wait? Amine borane. I like to say borane. We're on trifluoride. Same question. Please identify the loose acid and please identify the loose base. Take a shot. Lewis base, Lewis base, Lewis base is which molecule or which atom? Well, there's a bond there. Who's got the lone pair to donate it? If you pull these apart, who has the lone pair? Say it again. Nitrogen. Yeah. Because if you look at the periodic table, if you count from left to right, you go lithium, beryllium, boron, three valence electrons. That only has three. It's using them to make three bonds to fluoride. Doesn't have a little pair. Nitrogen, though. One, two, three, four, five. It's nitrogen. Five valence electrons. So it makes three bonds and it has a little pair. Well, let's keep. So nitrogen is the Lewis base. Boron is Lewis acid. Boron's the one you gotta watch. That's the non-metal you gotta keep your eye on. Boron chemistry. Any thoughts about Lewis acid base at this stage? That's a great question. We went to perhaps annoying lengths to talk about strong versus weak in the Bronsted acid category. So that's one where the equilibrium where an acid donates a proton, the base accepts a proton. Strong and weak in that sense don't apply to Lewis acids. And you can get relative Lewis acid strength. So if you look up in a table, you can find tables, I should say, of Lewis acidity. And we don't really delve into that here. But it's an ordered list, and it will say this is the strongest and this is the weakest, and you can figure out which one is stronger or weaker based on that. But the strong as a complete association doesn't apply to this test. Really good question. I thought that. Good question. Okay. Sweet. There's a term called polyprotic. There are two that you simply must be familiar with for all of the majors that we have. Probably even business. Certainly kinesiology, marine science, environmental science. The three main science majors, even environmental studies, probably should have this one. 
because they come up all the time. Where's Polly mean? Many. Protic protons. So many protons. More than one proton. H3PO4 and H2CO3 means that more than one proton can come off. That's what that means. Here's the trick, though. They don't come off at the same time, if you want to think about it that way. They don't come off, it just gives them all away. They come off stepwise, one at a time. First, second, third. We'll talk about the takeaways and we'll do this exercise of writing the equilibria for H3PO4. The takeaway, the skill you need is to be able to identify. That is, is, is I might say, is this molecule triprotic, diprotic, or monoprotic? And you need to look at it to be able to figure out the answer to that. Or is this monobasic, dibasic, tribasic? One way to think about this is that the prefix gives the number of equilibria you should expect. If it's a triprotic acid, you should expect three equilibria, three acid equilibria for Ka. What is the generic acid equilibrium? So the generic equation, how should I phrase this? The generic acid reaction for Ka. What's it look like? HA plus what? Yep, plus water. Good. And HA acts as an acid to protonate water, and you get A minus, right? Let's do that for H3PO4. No. There we go. Oh dear. Yeah, that's my my brother-in-law's girlfriend's song. Because life is complicated. Oh dear, what has happened here? <laughs> I have no idea how that. I know that's on the desktop because I've downloaded her demo thing so I can put it on my phone because my daughter likes it. I don't know how that got into here. Yeah, right. It comes with a virus that automatically loads it into your. Okay, let's try that again. H3PO4. I guess I just gave her some publicity, so that's good. So you can write an equilibrium constant for any balanced reaction. You can write an equilibrium constant. Should actually, oh, goodness gracious, a mess since I accidentally uploaded that MP3. What's a minus? What do you get when one proton falls off of H3PO4? Well, first of all, how many protons are left? Two. But now what's the charge? Minus one, right? Because you lost one positively charged proton. Whatever it was, take away a proton, take away a positive charge. Good.
That is the first acid equilibrium. Second acid equilibrium is start with the products of the first. Start with H2PO4 minus. That could lose another two protons. And it will. That loses a proton. It now will have one, right? HPO4. Two minus. Excellent. And Ka, let's put Ka1 and Ka2. Again, H3 plus HPO4 2 minus and H2PO4 minus. Similar structure, but different chemicals. Always products of reactants, but now you might find a different value if you look them up. Do it again. Get rid of third KA. Regrettably, we are all out of protons. Bless you, and I cannot continue. H3PO4, triprotic acid, because it could lose three protons. It has three KAs, which means it has three PKAs. You might be called upon in your biological career to find the pKa of, for example, H2PO4 minus. You can try a Google search for that, but I don't recommend it. What I recommend you do is do a Google search of a Wikipedia or an MSDS or what have you for the fully protonated all acid form, the most protons you can get. In this case, that's H3PO4, phosphoric acid. Because that's where you'll find all of the PKAs for these. Usually on the right, under properties, acidity, pKa, pKa1, 2, and 3. Good. So 2.15, 7 7.2, and 12.32. Where am I? 2.15, 7.2, 12.32. Which one of those is the appropriate pKa to choose for H2PO4 minus? 7.2. How did you know? Because it's the second one. Yeah. So in I wrote out these three acid equilibria. 
first, second, third. Those are the increasing PKAs. What's more acidic, the high pH or low pH? Low pH. Same is true for PKA. The lower PKA means more acidic. Here, hey, I even wrote a reminder to myself to do that. And you have to be specific that it's for whatever HA is in that equation. So we wrote down three equilibria. In the second one, HA was H2PO4 minus. That's why that's the PKA for that capacity. Oh, oh, this is a classic example of how, on an exam, I can word a question many different ways to check out if you're able to apply the same topic. Lower PKA means more acidic. Okay, I could ask if it's a lower PKA or a higher PKA. And I could also ask if it's more acidic or more basic. Lower PKA. Remember we said lower pKa. pKa goes in the same direction as pH. So lower is more acidic. Lower pKa means what about basicity? Lower pKa means what about basicity? Does that matter? It does. And it's always about the pair when you're talking about a pKa. But an acid, by definition, is not acting as a base. So the A minus is the chemical that's acting as a base if you're talking about what's a stronger base. You have to look at the base. Whereas if I'm asking about an acid, you have to look at pKa because that's the acid. So you're always, if it's you know, the second of three equilibria, you're looking at that equilibrium. But if it's a base, you want A minus. And if it's an acid, you want pKa. Yeah, very good question. Organic chemistry, to me, because that's not what I did my PhD in, looked to me like memorizing hundreds of pKa's for different molecules. And I looked at that and was like, no thank you. No thank you. I want to play with pretty colors and explosive materials, so I'll do metal chemistry. But if you want to memorize pKa's, go right ahead. Organic chemistry at the undergrad level probably doesn't require memorizing a lot of PKAs, although you guys don't know. It's useful to know. Some of them it's useful to know, for sure. But you will often be asked to compare them and say, is this base strong enough to deprotonate the molecule I'm interested in? The molecule I'm interested in, yeah, exactly. The molecule I'm interested in will have a PKA. If I want a strong enough base, do I want a PKA higher or lower? Stronger base is what? So weaker base, less basic, was a lower PKA. Yeah. Right. You can do this in terms of PKB. I urge you not to. I 
think it's confusing. If you want to, you can work it all out and figure out how to do this in terms of PKB, what's stronger, what's weaker. I very strongly advise you to convert it to PKA and deal with it in this way. In part because that's what the organic and biochem textbooks do, so it's not probably worth your time to practice doing it the other way. I, it's rare that I try that I tell you how I recommend doing something. Usually I'm like, yeah, you give the answer. Good. I like lots of different ways. This is one where I really strongly recommend you do the PKA plus PKB equals 14. Get everything in PKA and then use the tools. How else could I phrase a question? <coughs> Looking at relative acid base strength. I might give you a table of chemicals and PKAs and ask you to find Sure, I could ask for the weakest base and you would one limit it to the A minuses of the equilibrium. Or, uh, base must be the A minus. And then Within that, I would go, I want the weakest base. So I want the PKA that is highest or lowest? Lowest. Because lowest is the, would be the strongest acid, and that corresponds to the weakest base. Go try one. Let's try one. Aye. Do the other acid while we're at it. Carbonic acid. No. It's got to react. Well, let's keep it the same. I forget what the PK is, so I'll make it up. It'll be close enough. Which of those chemicals is strong base? Carbonate. CO32 minus. How did you know? Because it's the PKA that is the highest of these, and it's the base out of that pair. It's the A minus. Right, the PKA is higher, so you look at that equation. That's right. Look at the high pKa equation and choose the base. Which, if you like the generic form, is the A minus. So that second equation, that has the higher pKa. Okay, that will contain the strongest base. But which chemical is it? What chemical do I need? 
It's the base, CO3 2 minus. Good, very good. What do you think? Questions? Oops. One way that you might see this phrase, particularly in organic chemistry, is Something like this. You want a base that is strong enough to deprotonate. What is deprotonating? Take a proton. Take it. That's right. To deprotonate an acid that has a pKa of 3.1. Do you want a base that is stronger than that? What pKa's will you look for? Not necessarily the closest. That's different. The, the closeness is what we'll get into in the next chapter in buffers. Do you want PKAs that are lower or higher? Higher. higher. <laughs> I was careful a little bit. Well, maybe careful is the wrong word. I was more careful with the language here. I didn't say any bases for the pKa of this because the pKa technically is for the acid, for HA. But you want the A minus in that equation. Cool. You, right, so the question is do you necessarily want the highest or not? As phrased, do you want anything for the pKa is higher? Um, if it says to make the strongest base, then you want the highest. This is probably most important in, well, maybe important, but definitely in my opinion. Well, amino acid, that's acid. And you want to know any basis that you're strong enough to keep running. If you want to know about that, because they'll do it. They'll do it. What else you got? Graders, any input? ISAs, I guess? You're not graders anymore, you're ISAs now. Say it again. If you this material shows up in biochem a lot. Biochem a lot? Biochem a lot. Shows up a lot in biochem. One of the things I'm going to do at the end of the semester is say, people who've taken Chemical 11 and the next couple of courses here in several majors can go through and make a list of where you will see this again. Because we're not just spinning wheels, we're doing this mostly as prep for things you might see. We do something else. Okay, very good. Anything further before we go? Go on. I mean, all good, all good. Titration curves and shapes. You'll get this primarily in lab, but at least one section has a worksheet for this space in the world. So I figured we should talk about it here. On a titration curve, you will plot pH on the y axis. And if you have an acid, and I always, I always use the phrase in the beaker versus in the burette. So the sample you're titrating is what goes in the beaker. You take a sample of that and you're going to titrate it. Let's start with titrating an acid. 
So there's an acid in the beaker. The pH will start where? High or low? Low. Good. What are you going to be adding to this acid to titrate it? A base, typically. You might do a buffer, but that would be an unusual experiment. It's been done, but typically you'll add a strong base. And you can add base of different concentration. 0.1 molar or 0.10 molar is very, very common. This is probably the most common concentration of what's called a titrant, the material you are adding. As you add base, what generally do you expect to happen to the pH? Yes, yeah, it goes up. If you're adding base, it gets more basic, so it goes up. If you, this is a, a, a section where it's very easy to instinctively jump out and give an answer that you have a 50-50 shot at. So it's, it's up or down. What I do still, after years of doing this, is take a second and walk myself through what it means to be an acid or a base. I say, okay, adding base, acidic is low pH base because high pH. So if I'm adding base, pH will go up. So then there's more base. And I literally like to do that in my head every time. So figure out what your system is for being systematic about it. And we'll save you time in the long run. So pH I expect to go up. What happens is you'll be adding base, adding base, adding base. Whoa, pH goes up. And then it tells off. dot in the middle of the star, yeah, the dot in the middle of the sharp incline. So it's called the equivalence point. Yeah, I mean, like graphically it's an inflection, but here it's chemically it's called the equivalence point. Okay, so something's equal. What's equal is the initial moles of acid. Moles of base added. At the equivalence point. Strong acids start at low pH and have a steep increase in pH around the equivalence point. pH starts changing, it changes fast. And I don't necessarily mean time, I mean with added base. It changes a lot in response to a small addition of base. Addition of base is the Concentration is not quite right because you're adding material and you're diluting it, so it's good to keep it in moles, but in this case the acid would be HA. I'm trying to figure out how to represent it in an equation. Equals 
with both of these in moles. And the reason I'm struggling a little bit is because what, what's important here is that the HA is initial. It's what you put in the beaker. The number of moles of HA you put in the beaker at the equivalence point are now equal to the number of moles you have added with the burette. Moles of O H minus. So that's a really good question and a perfectly legit request. I'm kind of struggling with to put it in the equation form. Actually, let's do triprotic. H3PO4 is triprotic. How do I know it's weak? Because I found three PKAs, and if it has a PKA, it's got to be weak. Still an acid. So depending on the concentration, the pH will be acidic. It will be less than 7 but it may not be as acidic as the strong acid because, you know, it's weak. So, pH 7, pH might start here. Can you guess how many equivalence points those should be? Yeah, three. You'll go through an equivalence point where you have chopped through each of those protons, one by one by one. And again, it's in the middle of the the middle of the steepest rise. Equivalence point one, equivalence point two, and equivalence point three. How did I know it was an acid? I guess you could have a weak acid that's higher than 7, but it's rare. Plus you're adding base to it. You add base to a base. What's that going to do for you? Make it even more basic, yeah. We don't need that. Okay. How did I know it was weak? PKAs. Also, the initial pH was greater than about, let's say, 1, maybe 1.5. It's really hard to get a pH below 1.5 or 1 with a weak acid. You can do it, but it takes a lot. Right? So, the strong acid, you can get pHs of 1, 0. We calculated a few that had a negative pH. Hard pressed to do that with weak acid. You do it, but it's hard. So typically, if you're working under reasonable lab conditions, your initial pH will be above 1.5, but still somewhat acidic for a weak acid. How did I know it was triprotic? At three equivalence points.
Questions so far? Draw the titration curve you expect for the titration of sodium carbonate with 0.1 molar HCl. Titration of means that whatever that chemical is, this is in the beaker. Titration with means that's what's in the burette. Walk me through it. A couple of people got it. What do you expect? What should tell me what to draw? Okay, it's going to go from high to low. How did you know? It's a base. What's the base? Here's a key question. I said sodium carbonate. That's a neutral molecule. What is the base? What is the actual molecule that will take a proton? Yeah, because a Brownstead base is the molecule that accepts a proton. You're not going to take Na2CO3 and add a proton to it and make Na2HCO3+. Say again? CO3 2 minus carbonate is the base. Fantastic. You, this is a salt. You allow it to ionize, and then the base is the base. pH will start high. This one I may not have given you enough information for. Is this going to be weak or strong? We don't know. Calcium carbonate would be another source of CO3, 2 minus, right? Because the base is the, that part. Is a coral skeleton a strong base? No. That's one I think. It's weak. If you look up the PKAs, they'll be there, and it's there for weak. But... Weak strong? Weak. Mono di tri basic, since it's a base. Someone had it. Well, how many protons could CO3 2 minus take on? So it's that basic. pH will start somewhat high and go down as I had acid. There will be one equivalence point and two equivalence points. Equivalence point is again in the middle of the most, I call it slopey, but the region of highest slope. They kind of additives. Made of additives and made of verbs. You're going to do these if you're in lab. You're going to titrate a bunch of acids and a bunch of bases. Then you're going to do some buffers, which is the next chapter here. Then the lab practical is going to come. And you're going to say, what's on it? And I'm going to tell you exactly what you're going to be asked to do. You will be given an unknown chemical, asked to titrate it, and then tell us. You'll be given a base. And you'll be asked to tell me if it's weak or strong, if it's monochronic or dichronic, or exactly what we're doing here based off the shape. Plenty of opportunities to practice between now and then, but this is the first time practice.
Good. Yeah, Barbara. Okay. Typically true for bases, and you need to be a little bit careful. People can be too glib about this, but generally it's true. If your pH is 13.5, probably it's a strong base. If your pH is 11, probably it's a weak base. It depends on the concentration, but yeah, if it's a weak base, it should be mildly alkaline. So what I'm saying, pH is probably higher than 7, or probably not close to 14, because that's strong base territory. The other thing you can look at is how much the pH changes. So let me draw a strong base and a weak base. And so there was a diprotic, but let's do mono or dibasic. Let's do mono basic. Strong and weak. The initial pH for strong will be high. It will be probably higher than 13, depending on your concentration. So we know how to calculate the pH of strong base. pH probes happen not to work all that well when the pH is that high, but they'll give you a sense that it's, it's high. And what happens is the pH goes along and bam, bottom falls out, pH drops. Yeah, sometimes I make that noise when I'm titrating too. It's good not to work next to me in lab because I make noises. Weak, similar, pH starts high, maybe not as high. Slope is a little stronger. And the change is more gradual. I mean, frankly, all of the sections, the change is a little more gradual. The word that I inherited in 111L from the people who taught it before is that this has a drastic change in pH, which I love because it's super dramatic. I can go home and say, I titrated something today, the pH changed drastic. It sounds like I did something of value. <laughs> something happened in the lab one day and so broke out a bunch of numbers. You should find that Simpsons thing, Principal Skinner's with Bart doing astronomy or whatever. He says, this has all the fun of science, being quiet, writing down numbers. Cool story. Okay. Cool story, tell it again. Weak versus strong. Monobasic. Why do I know these are monobasic? There's only one equivalence point. You guys got it. That question we asked of what is the base is critical. And here's why. Remember we did the calcium hydroxide? Like we said that was a strong base because that was an alkali or alkaline earth metal. Strong means the whole thing dissociates. hydroxide. Well, kind of like that way. Strong, monobasic. What's the base? H minus. Strong, monobasic.
How would you decide whether it's strong or not? Great question. So if, it, if you're given a PKA or a PKB, you know it's weak. If you're not given one, for acids, there was that list. And for acids, I said, for now, in Chemo 11, I'll tell you. They're good to memorize, but I'll just tell you for the acids. The bases, I will expect you to remember. Because the strong bases that we will work with, the only strong bases that actually work in water, are hydroxides of the first two columns, alkali and alkali earth. So things like sodium, lithium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. Say again? I would, well, the why is an interesting question. Those are the ones that you need to know as strong bases. Hydroxides are the first two columns. Um, why is that hydroxide doesn't bond all that strongly to those atoms, so they're very happy to fall apart. You ever, anyone ever made a solution like taking a solid and AOH or KOH, put it in water to make a solution? <coughs> It gets really hot, really hot when you dissolve a strong base in water because it's exothermic. Very, very happy dissociating water. Really hot. There's one we should also have to do that gets super cold. That one's weird too. Solid potassium K explodes in water. I'd love, I'll see if we can get some to do the demo that I used to be up in high school class that we're not here. Um, that's in the electrochemistry chapter why that happened. Solid potassium, yes, you put that in water, it, it heats up, but in a different way. It, it vents flammable hydrogen gas, which inevitably catches on fire, and it goes and scoots itself. It's cool, it's a chunk of metal floating on top of water, like ejecting hydrogen gas and propelling itself forward and catching on fire. It's not fun to watch. <laughs> right now we're talking about potassium hydroxide. So the K has what charge? K has a plus one charge in KOH. What's, we'll deal with the charge on K, but it's just potassium metal in the electric chemistry chapter. But it'll heat up and it won't explode. Unless you did something very wrong. Which, which happens. <laughs> Here's a bunch of practice. You can hack through these. But I want to go to the text. Acid strength and molecular structure. In lecture today, we talked about relative acid and base strength, looking at an ordered list of PKAs. And that's really all we talked about. I didn't tell you the why. You have questions, Scott? No. Okay, cool. Um, we didn't talk about the why. The book goes much deeper into the why. I will ask you to choose which is stronger, what is strong enough to be protein. Please pick the strongest acid, that type of protein. This goes into the what's really going on. We have learned that a bernstein lowry acid is a proton donor. However, we have not explored why some hydrogen-containing molecules act as acid while others don't. Why is H2S? This is hydrogen sulfide. This is like swamp gas. You ever smell a sewer? Yeah. What they don't tell you about that is that it's equally toxic to cyanide, but everyone's used to smelling it, and they're not used to smelling cyanide. The toxicity, like the legal limits you're allowed to be exposed to, exactly the same for sewer gas. Yeah, agreed. Why is that acidic while CH4, methane, is not? Frankly, why is hydrogen sulfide acidic while water is not really acidic? So sulfur and oxygen are what are called congeners. They're in the same uh, column. How come water is neutral, but if you put hydrogen sulfide in water, it's acidic? Because it's acidic, it's not acidic. Why is HF a weak acid, while well, HCl is a strong acid? We will divide our discussion, okay, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, exactly, whoever you are, exactly, I'm with you. Bond polarity, using the notation introduced in some class you've taken before, the HY, yeah, I mean one time, but not for everyone. So the HY bond must be polarized with the hydrogen atom as positive in order for HY to be acidic. Oh, for the H to fall off, because that's what acids do, they give up H, that bond has to be polar. If you make lithium hydride, 
which is kind of a fun chemical to work with. Here's another one that explodes in water. The lithium is the partial plus. This is backwards. Usually H is plus. Here it's not. If you make the carbon-hydrogen bond, the bond that is, that is like 90% of organic chemistry that you deal with. Carbon-hydrogen bond, not acidic. Why? What kind of bond is the CH bond? Nonpolar, non-hydrogen bond per se. It's a covalent bond. Electrons are shared and it's nonpolar. HF, however, which one of these has a higher electronegativity? Which one's more electronegative? Chlorine. So it wants the partial negative, H wants the partial positive. It's acidic. Then we talk about these. The partial positive charge here. The partial positive charge in the hydrogen atom makes it easier for the hydrogen to be lost as an H plus ion. How much of a plus charge is on that H plus ion? All of it, one. If it's already partially positive, it's more likely to go all the way and become positive. It means it's more likely to be an acid. We have a table of bond energies, and here we talked about how HF, briefly, we talked about how HF is the only weak acid of that, of the halogens. And here we look at bond energies between the H and the halogen, and it is the strongest bond energy. Therefore, it's a weak acid. HCl has a bond energy of 431. HBr has a bond energy of 364. They're both strong. Okay, so they both dissociate. But here's the thing. Which one's stronger? I'm asking about HCl and HBr. Which one of these is bonded more weakly? HBr is bonded more weakly. That means more likely to fall apart. So HBr is a stronger acid. That's what's actually behind acid strength, is how strong is the bond. All right, thank you very much. Go get them. See you next week. Thank you.